Hello guys and welcome to my channel. This is a second video about reviving an old notebook which I got some time ago. The question which I would like to answer is, how usable is a notebook from the year 2005 today? We'll put the link to the first video down into the description. However, to recap a little bit, last time I opened the notebook, analyzed the internal components, cleaned everything up, replaced the battery and ordered a new part. And here we are today. Some time passed and the parts eventually arrived, so we can continue our experiment. Here they are, let's see what we have. First of all, we have uh, two modules of memory, one gigabyte each. This must be a DDR memory with 333 MHz. And here we have quite a modern part. This is a MSATA SSD drive with 64 GB. Well, you might think it's not too much. However, the original drive in the notebook was 40 or 60 GB if I remember right. And in comparison to that, it is even more than what we had. Furthermore, I don't think we will need more than this. And now to the question, how can we use this MSAT drive in the notebook? If you remember, it has only a 44-pin IDE with a uh, proprietary adapter. There is no MSAT connecting that notebook at all. And this is where this part comes into play. It is a um, SATA to 44-pin IDE drive adapter, which we can use in the notebook. Look at this. On this side, it looks just the same as the 44-pin IDE hard drive which been installed in the notebook. And on the other side, we can put a MSATA SSD disk drive into it. So if we put the proprietary adapter on top of this IDE to MSATA adapter, we should have a fully working SSD in this old notebook. Now let me put this SSD into the adapter. Oh, there is obviously a problem. This voltage regulator stands a little bit off and pushes against the chips on the SSD, so I can't completely screw it onto the board. Luckily, it doesn't need to be as tight, so I'll put a little bit of electric tape in between and screw the SSD as far as I can. Now let's assemble everything and put into the notebook. Now if you saw the first video you will remember that this notebook has two slots for memory. One right under the keyboard and the other one on the bottom side of the notebook. Don't forget to fix the keyboard using the screws from the bottom side. Now where the notebook is reassembled again, let's give it a first try. As you can see, the notebook complains about different size of memory now. And it is damn right, because we now should have 2 gigs of RAM in it. Let us take a look on the system information in the BIOS once again. There we go, 2 gig of memory. Fortunately, this mainboard has a built-in memory test in the BIOS. Let's run it to see if everything is okay. And it looks just fine. 
Now we are ready to install the operation system. This notebook was made for Windows XP back in the days. However, I don't want to use this operation system in the year 2019. So I decided to go with Linux. Unfortunately, we are limited in our freedom choosing a Linux distribution, since this notebook can 32-bit only, and usually I would prefer Arch Linux. However, meanwhile it doesn't support 32-bit anymore. So in the end I decided to go with a good old Debian. The version 10 was just released, and I think it's a good compromise. The installation process went without any problems. Almost everything worked out of the box. Our new SSD worked also flawlessly. I only had to install additional firmware for the Wi-Fi. After that, everything worked just perfectly. Since uh, this is still quite an old piece of hardware, I used XFCE as a desktop environment. In the given configuration, the notebook needs around 30 seconds to boot into the desktop. That's astonishing for a hardware from 2005. It is clearly possible to do daily work with this notebook. Writing emails and letters, moving files around, working with the file manager, everything worked quite smoothly. However, the CPU is definitely a bottleneck. Using more demanding applications brings the CPU clearly to its limit. YouTube is a good example where CPU is struggling a lot. Keep an eye on this CPU graph on the panel. It is almost always at 100%. Well, this is somehow understandable because this is a 14 years old CPU with a single core 1.4 GHz, which just wasn't made for today's purposes. And from that point of view, I'm just surprised how good that still works. Clearly it's stuttering from time to time, but it is usable. Regarding YouTube, the most CPU usage is happening when the page is loading. However, as this being done, you can watch the videos quite good. I can navigate inside of the video, the UI is working, but as you can see, the CPU is always at its limit. So all in all, I would say daily working is absolutely possible with this machine. Let's take a look on some gaming. Let's start with a less demanding game from 1998, Quake 2. The native resolution of the monitor is 1024 by 768 and as I can see the game is not working perfect at this resolution. I think it's playable, but I think I will do another video with benchmarking just to give you a better idea how good or bad it is working. Now let's take a look on the game from 2003, Doom 3. I think this game is just too demanding for this hardware. So I will directly go to the lowest settings and see what's happening. And as you probably see, we have only two, maybe three frames per second. So this game is absolutely not playable on this hardware. Even at the lowest resolution, it's just too much. And I think it's due to the very weak Intel onboard GPU. It was just never made for games like this. So let me summarize. This notebook is still okay for uh, application usage like text writing and emails and internet surfing, such kind of things. It is already struggling with the games from the end of 90s and the games from early 2000s are absolutely not playable on this machine. Even on more demanding 
web pages like YouTube, it has a lot of problems rendering the pages. So if you ask me, the CPU is a huge bottleneck in this machine. Fortunately, it is not possible to upgrade this hardware to a dual or even more multi-core CPUs. However, it is possible to upgrade it to a Pentium M with 2.13 GHz, I think, which should double the performance of the CPU. And this is what I think I will do. I will try to find such a replacement and we'll do another video where we'll exchange the CPU and do some more benchmarking in games and programs to see if we can get out of this notebook even more. So far, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.